What's happening to? What's going on with y'all today, man? Hey, man, I'm finna bring y'all a real quick video, man. From start to finish, how to unload tanker, man. Right now, I got a rubber line tanker. I got some water treatment in there. And yeah, we finna do the damn deal, man. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let me bring this video to you. And um, what else I'm gonna be doing is, um, like once I'm finished, I'm gonna go over and um, just kind of reverberate over everything, give you guys a couple tips and things to know about that. Um, this is a rubber line tanker, so it's not the shiny stainless ones y'all see going down the road. It's just the money line right here, man. A money train. But, um, yeah. Anything else on the go? No, that's everything. That's everything, man. Y'all gonna see start to finish. Bear with me about the sound, because, um, to run your PTO compressor. All you gotta do, idle up the truck, and boom. There's gonna be a lot of noise because we ain't got none of them quiet trucks y'all got around there. Come on! Alright, two. Let's get started, man. I already started up. I had difficulties with the GoPro or whatever, but we bite live! We bite live! But yeah, first thing you wanna do. Hook your eye holes up. All right. This is what your compressor runs the air in. These are your Chicago fittings. Always want to check these gaskets, but you know, as long as there's one on there is what matters. But two of these, like if I had a new one, just like this one is new right there, it'd be damn near impossible for me. Like I would have to push on it hard and then twist and that's all you have to do push twist chicago fittings your lines already got this open that's closed that's open always remember when it's running with the line it's open when it's running away from the line like that that's closed always have it with the line when it's open when you want it open it's got to be with the line okay going back to the bike bike here I already got everything open like i said i had problems but that's open because it's you know running with the line climb up here this one's open want to make sure that's open you're good make sure your um, dome lid is tight so you don't have any air leaks because you don't want to be leaking air once you get all your lines your valves open i'm gonna go start up your pto that's the first thing i do when you're first starting out, I don't recommend you guys starting your PTOs up. We're gonna get into air pressure in a minute, but what you do is, I'd rather y'all sit down, but I'm strong enough to do it. Some guys can do it or not, but yeah. You wanna push your clutch down, let the clutch blade stop it, push that up, push it back, and engages it, now we're getting air. I remember my RPMs between nine and a thousand. Running at about nine because the trail is real full. So that way the air is moving. When we start up. Now you want to go to your hoses. Anytime I run a rubber line trail, I always use plastic hoses. You got plastic and you got stainless. <clears throat> hmm. I guess I'll use this one. Cause this actually is the same product from my last load. Alright. Right now all I'm doing is just setting up all my stuff. I'm going right there to right here. Okay. Now I got my hose. That should reach. Looks like this guy finna come run his mouth to me. Now you wanna 
get your fittings, your shims. These right here go over your cam locks, which is these. Goes right over just like that. I use these to tighten up the holes you'll see when I get back there. Should be good. These are your gaskets for inside. That's inside for a three inch. I'll get into that later. Yeah, I'll get into all the fittings later for you guys. That's your air right there. I usually let off between 10 and 15. I mean, 15 and 20. You know, just at your preference. Usually have a gauge right here on that line and the gauge right there. Some of our gauges, they act a little ESC, government welfare check, whatever you want to call it. They don't be working right. They never match up, but I usually go off that one because that's the one I look at every time. I mean, we don't really have the same trailers all the time, so. This trailer right here, someone already put a three to two um, mail on there. So all I'm gonna do is, oh, okay, it's two males. So what I'm gonna need is a double female two inch fitting. I'm gonna see this in a minute. This here is a double female two inch fitting. See, female, female. Yeah, <laughs> female, female. Don't do that at home. You steady watching me, man. Why are you watching me, man? I ain't doing nothing, man. I'm working. All right. Always want to make sure your fittings are tight on there. This one here is real tight. That's good. On most hoses, you'll see one side will be male, one side will be female. That's why I had went and got a two inch. See, it's not supposed to be that easy. Looks like someone was already using one. I'll just use this one since it was already here. Stick it inside that side of the cam lock. Good to go? Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna head back across the river. Okay, all right, you know man. Where the phone is? Yeah, yeah, I know where the phone is. Yeah, 2440. You mm -hmm. gotta get a hold of me for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man, you have a good one. So 
we all hooked up, go ahead and oh, wait. Always make sure these are out. Always make sure those are out. I do a lot of walking back and forth, but I like to do that so that way I know that I'm good. You might forget something back there or what have you. Yeah, I usually cheat and do this. Probably be like another three four minutes by the time I'm able to, to let off usually like when you got a half load man you it'll, it'll take about 20 minutes to fill the trail up with the proper supply of air to push you know smoothly so yeah but yeah that's basically it once you get your proper supply of air you do smack that to open pull this open a little bit make sure you don't have any leaks make sure you don't have any leaks here man I gotta get a bucket to go right there Let's see if they got a bucket around here that's all I have to use my bucket treatment so it's not gonna hurt anything if it drops on the ground but you know we're gonna be safe and sorry right let's go check our air again that's one thing I like about tanker you do a lot of walking back and forth see we're at about 20 now I'm gonna let it go up to about 25 probably take two more minutes because once you open up your pressure always drops so if I let it off at 25 It'll drop down to about 19, 20, and we smooth. So again, these are very important. These shims go inside your cam lock, very important. And another thing, see how I have this hose? Once product starts flowing through here, it puts weights on the hose. So some guys, they get a bucket and prop it up like this. But me, that's why I game as close as I did. But right there is cool. And when that weight hits it, it causes it to like, you know, bend a little bit. That's what these shims I noticed are for. That's why those shims are good because 
it tightens it up a little more that way you know product isn't seeping through or anything let's go check our air real quick real quick like uh, got a hot condition Alright, we at 25, let's go. Let's go ahead and kick this crap off. And with these rubber line tankers, this is air supplied. So when I click that to open, it should go shh. Not like a loud shh. Like it should, you should hear like air is going into it, like like it's filling up. Like see, see if you can hear it. made that little squeaky noise like in a scary movie you ain't got to be scared just open up slow see how the hose starts dropping again all I'm doing is checking for leaks and letting it slowly through Just open it up real slow like. Once you see you don't have any leaks, I'm gonna leave that right there. Time being. Feel. You can listen. That's what I like to do. I like to listen to it. JB won't be able to listen to it though, because he can't hear. Open it up all the way. No leaks. Everything looks good to me. Check again. No leaks. What I do next, basically like the final procedure for unloading or getting it started at least. Check my pressure. We had almost 27, 28. So it's gonna fly off. It's gonna fly off. But when you got pressure that high, you wanna keep checking it every five minutes. But like I say, it'll drop once traffic gets, once things get flowing. All right. In some places, most places they have a valve right here right at their hookup but they don't have one it's inside the building which the guy that you guys just saw he already opened it up and everything called him before i was coming it's supposed to deliver monday but you know me guys i don't play around man i, I get going i don't play the radio around her see we done dropped down to 24 now so that's good it's gonna fly off pretty quick. Like I said, I got a full load, man. I was 80,000, deuce deuce was just carrying it, man. Deuce deuce be carrying it like it's nothing. Be flying past those people. Be flying past them. Their Cascadia is 300 horses. Just flying past them going up the hills. I'm going up the hills, now. I don't, I don't speed, I, I don't speed. I might use it, no, I'm just playing. But yeah, that's basically all it, guys. Guys, we bike live, man. Let's talk some fittings. Right here, this is a three to two. Three inch female, two inch male, okay? Female, male with a ball valve. And basically, people use this either to blow their line clean or let air out of the line. I, I rarely use this, but it is a good one to have. But like I say, I got a rubber line tanker, so we stick with using my plastics. I'm not sure. I think they make those with ball valves on them too. I think they make plastic three to two with ball valves on them. I'm not sure. But here we got another one. This here is a three to two. It needs to be washed. Jesus Christ, I don't think I ever use this. Yeah, I need to clean. I need to clean that, so I'll put that right there. I usually put everything that needs to be clean. 
right there, but yeah. This here is a three to three female, double female. Those are your gaskets I've been telling you about. Got the gaskets inside of there. This here needs to be cleaned, but I got extra ones. I always keep extra fittings. Over here, you got a double male, three inch. Hardly use that. Got a double. It's a double female plastic. Basically the same thing as this. Same as this, but just plastic. That needs to be. No, I think I already cleaned this. Yeah, it was already cleaned there, bud. back in there yep that's mostly not the fittings I really ever have to use talk hoses real quick that's a stainless as you can see it's very different than that I mainly always use plastic hoses I rarely ever use my stainless see that's another stainless right there yeah, I rarely ever use those stainless. Even though stainless has better, what word am I looking for? Basically, it's tighter. Like you guys see how I was telling you about these shims when I was just unloading. You don't have to use those on stainless. But you know, I was always taught that if you're using rubber line, which is always a plastic fitting maybe I mean always a plastic valve you know you use plastic hoses for it so you know this here is always plastic on a rubber line you got rubber lines um, what's the other one fiberglass which is basically I like it's just look the same to me you know I think the in some with the inside is different I, I don't know I ain't been in it that long be going the ins and out by them and I just get the job done y'all can see pressure right there see how it y'all it drops drop down gotta get a better focus yep yeah, it looks like it's about to rain, so this is my good camera here, guys. I don't need nothing happening to this one. Go back inside. Yeah, another thing I want to mention, too. I want to always have a good... We want to have a good angle when you're unloading. Basically, you want... I don't know if you guys can see not going in that grass over there but I'm at a pretty good angle should have pulled up a little more which is what I might do but you always want to have a good angle that way all the product can be in the back of the trailer that way you don't have any hill left hill is basically leftover product that you're not unable to unload but we have high fifth wheels so usually have a pretty good angle no matter what but as y'all can see this is like i'm on a hill so it's pretty good Let's see if i can get it for you guys Let's see it's a hill, so product all the product is going to come off all right two Two ways to know if you finish and your trail is empty. You can go off your air pressure. Okay. You can go off the gauge in there like I told you. You can go off your pressure gauge. But that's what I use when I'm just sitting in a truck. That just gives me an idea of where I'm at, where the trailer's at. So we're sitting at about 11 right now, and it looks.
looks like it's dropping. Yeah, it looks like it's dropping pretty good. That's the first thing I've, I know if I'm unloaded. Trail is empty, air gauge. Second thing is to listen. You will hear air coming through there. If it's empty. Third thing is to lift your hose. You can also feel it. And there's another thing too that you can do. When you're sitting here watching it, because you have some people who sit and watch it, me, I just keep checking on it. But you will notice the holes start jumping when there's nothing inside the trailer. When it's just shooting straight air, holes will start jumping. See, it's moving a little bit. It's not yet completely empty. Go back. See where my pressure's at. I usually go off the pressure and the feel of the holes. As you can tell when products inside the line. Okay, see? Yeah, something stills in there because if it was real empty, you won't have any air pressure to be at like four. If the trailer was empty, so it's still pushing some. Just not much. It's about to rain on me. Yeah, those are the, the three or four ways you can tell if you're empty. And that's about it. Once you figure out if you're empty, all you gotta do, close up your valves. Usually, I let all the air out because most people's tanks are vented. So you can just turn off your PTO in the truck. That way you're not putting any more air through. Keep this open, close all your other valves, take your airline out, whatever. Just let all the air go through. Once most of the air, all of it's going through, close this up, close your internal valve, external valve. Take your hoses down, put everything back where you got it from. And that's basically it, man. Tanker's real simple. I don't know why a lot of people are scared of it. There's damn good money in it too. You get to get out. Yeah, it's still pushing something through. Yeah, you get to get out, do a lot of walking around. It's not as physical as flatbed, but do a lot of walking. More than the door swingers come out.